just a heads up, this will be a long one and the whole story might be a bit hectic because it still terrifies me till this day to even think about. But after binge reading multiple similar stories here, I decided to share as well. So the whole thing happened back in summer 2016. For some context, my parents go on holidays quite often and I used to stay home alone for two weeks at the time to look after our dogs and take care of the garden in general. I've always been a bit of a scaredy cat due to my experiences with being harassed and followed home a couple of times. My neighborhood was relatively new at the time, so the whole thing was surrounded by forests, and oftentimes you could come across some junkies lurking in the forest while walking home from shops. However, despite that, I usually felt very safe in my house, staying with four big dogs and all. Nothing would ever really happen since most of my neighbors were my dad's friends, who were all in the army. For some reason, it gives this odd sense of safety, because who would be stupid enough to try and break in the area like that? Oddly enough, during that particular summer, a couple of break-ins happened on my street, but my parents still decided to leave me home alone, reassuring me I have nothing to worry because I have my dogs and our house is surrounded by a big fence. My fence has little spikes on top, so it's almost impossible to jump across it without hurting yourself. So, the first couple of days were fine. Nothing weird happened, except some thuds I heard in my garden, but I thought nothing of it, since usually it was just Martins causing some mischief in my mom's flowers. It happened so often that even my dogs would ignore it at that point. Two days passed and I finally have to leave for shops, but due to lots of stuff to do throughout the day, I had to go in the evening when it was getting slightly dark outside. Very smart of me, I know. So I went shops, got my stuff, and would walk back home through the usual path. People would usually walk their dogs there, so it was quite busy in the evening because it was something in between a park and a forest. So I was casually walking, minding my own business, texting someone on my phone, when I noticed that some guy I passed suddenly stood up from a bench and started walking behind me. But again, thought maybe it's someone from my neighborhood that I don't recognize, and he's just walking in the same direction as me. So I exit the forest into a normal road where the houses start. I live right at the end of it. Guy is still walking behind me, I still think maybe he lives in one of these houses, but nope. I get to the last junction where my house is. Guy is still behind me. And at this point, I know he's not one of my neighbors, so my blood runs cold. Luckily, my neighbor who lives to the left of my house was outside watering his plants. He spotted me as I was walking by and started talking to me. He knew my parents were out of town and was so clearly concerned why I looked so stressed. So the guy who was walking behind me immediately noticed it and started running away again towards the forest, which ultimately gave me the creeps. He was clearly following me to my house. I called my parents to tell them that it happened, but again, they told me I have nothing to worry about. Our neighborhood is safe. I had my dogs with me, and so on and so on, so I try to calm down and go on with my things as usual. So for some more context, whenever my parents are out of town, I sleep in their bedroom downstairs, since I don't want my dogs to walk the stairs in the dark and possibly hurt themselves. That night, as usual, I was lying in bed, reading a book. My dogs are already soundly asleep in bed with me, I suppose that they could sense I was distressed because they usually sleep on the floor around the bed. I heard a thud coming from outside, like a little thud on the window in the room next to mine. Again, I thought it's just Martin's, but this time, my dog started growling at the window in my bedroom. A couple of seconds of silence, another thud, this time on the window in my bedroom. That already made me panic, but I tried to stay calm nonetheless. However, 
The third got louder, each coming from windows on the ground floor. Someone was banging on every window of my house, making my dogs go absolute ape shit, running around the house wherever the banks were coming from. At that point, I was in tears, knowing exactly what was happening. So I got out of my bedroom and I walked to the center of my house. The house has an open plan, so all rooms, where I can see the main door. And here's the thing. My main door has a window in it so you can see inside. So I sat down in the darkness a couple feet away from the door, waiting on what's going to happen, hoping and praying that someone will get scared of my dog's barking. But nope, wasn't this lucky. First, I see my dogs rushing to the door, barking at it before there's anything there. But then I see a black silhouette outside my main door, peeking inside and then banging on the little window as I'm sitting there, helpless. I moved out of sight, hiding under my table. I got my phone out as I'm still hearing that man try to break the glass. I called my dad, barely being able to breathe. Didn't pick up. Right, it was like 2 a.m. and they were on holidays. I tried two times more until my mom picked up, very confused why I'm calling in the middle of the night. I managed to spit out. Someone is trying to break in. I don't know what to do. At that point, the man was trying to open the door, banging with his whole body on the frame to the point where my mom could hear it on the call. My dad was frantically trying to call everyone who could come and help me. His brother, my neighbors, my grandma, everyone was put in a full mobility in that very moment to come here as fast as they could. My neighbors, the same one who spoke to me earlier that day, was the first one to come outside and scare that guy away. He rushed to my back garden but I was still too afraid to open the main door, despite the fact that I could see the neighbor standing in front of it. I knew that man was still on my property, but the back of the garden was pitch black, and my neighbor didn't want to risk going out there on his own and potentially getting knocked out with something heavy. Ten minutes later, my uncle, aunt, and grandma pull up to my house, and I can see them all outside. My uncle had a key, so we opened the door, letting my dogs outside so they could chase after the intruder. My dogs are hunting dogs. They're not cute little puppies for strangers. My uncle and neighbor went to the backyard with torches, accompanied by my dogs, to check every corner and make sure it's safe now. I will never forget how my grandma and my aunt approached me when I was clinging onto the chair absolutely in tears as my mom was trying to figure out what's happening on the call. The man escaped through the back of the garden into my other neighbor's garden. I'm guessing trying to get away from my dogs, but he was finally gone. He didn't manage to damage the little window in my main door. The glass was already slightly cracked. The door itself got loose on the door hinges. I don't want to think about what could have happened if they did get into my house that quickly. This happened several years ago. I was home alone one evening when I heard a knock at the back door. This confused me as no one ever used that door. My husband and I lived in a fourplex at the time, and all of the units had a back door at the top of a narrow staircase. These doors were a little inconvenient to access, as you have to go around the building and up the narrow stairs, as opposed to the wider main entrance at the front. It didn't make sense to use the back entrance, and I couldn't think of anyone who would go to that door to visit. As I approached the back door, I saw two tall men in the window, standing at the door. A chill went down my spine. I did not feel safe opening the door, so I called out, Hello? 
One of the men tapped on the window. Yes, hello. May we come in? We are with Bresnan. At the time, my husband and I had Bresnan for cable, but did not have any issues with it. I replied, we're not having any issues with Bresnan. Is there a problem? Ma'am, the man said. Can we come in? We're servicing the area, and it's important we look at your cable. I shook my head. We're not having any issues, I repeated, so there's no need to stop by. Ma'am, we are visiting every resident. Let us in so we can do our job. I noticed the man grab the doorknob and try to open the locked door. I slowly grabbed a knife from our knife's block and held it at my chest. We're not having any issues, I repeated, trying not to convey shakiness of my voice. So you don't need to be here. The two figures appeared to shuffle and then straighten. Let us in. We're on a deadline and need to do our job. I glanced at the clock, gauging when my husband would arrive home from work. I gripped the knife tighter. Ma'am? Ma'am? I saw him try the doorknob again. I closed my eyes and felt overwhelming gratitude of always locking my doors. Just then, a thought came to the forefront of my mind. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Could I please get your names and badge numbers? I can give your supervisor a call to let them know that our cable is fine. I heard another shuffle and one of the men replied, No need to, ma'am. We're sorry we wasted your time. With that, both of the men exited the staircase and disappeared into the night. Shaken up, I held the knife tight and tried to get my bearings. I remember making a mental note to call the cable company or the police, but my hands were shaking so badly I couldn't hold my phone. With the knife still grasped to my chest and the phone falling out of my other hand, I sank to the floor and cried. When my husband returned home, I told him what had happened. I was still very shaken up and had started crying again after he came home. He immediately called the Bresnan Cable Company and spoke to a representative who informed us that no one from their company was out on assignment in our area. The next day, we asked our neighbors if they had had a visit from the company. No one had. So, to the creepy men who tried to break into my home, under the disguise of cable repair, let's not meet. Hi, me, my sister, and my mom have been trying to make sense of this for the past couple of hours, and the facts get less comforting the more we compare our experiences of that night. So last Friday night, I, a 17-year-old male, was home alone while my family, besides my sister, 21, who was at work, stayed in their cabin a few kilometers away. I'm used to staying home alone, as this exact scenario is very common in the summertime, especially while I'm working and can't travel from the cabin and back. I'm not usually jumpy or afraid while home alone anymore, used to the odd creaks and settling noises of our old house. I was especially comforted by the fact that my sister's dog was also in the house with me that night, and most noises could be attributed to him. And, if anything were to happen, he would act as a guard dog of sorts and alert me to anything odd. At the same time, however, he is the type of dog to bark at any noise or person walking past the door or windows, so I'm used to hearing him bark or growl at night. Even so, this past Friday, the sound of his barks at nearly 12am were disconcerting, to say the least. Despite my comfort with staying home alone, I'm still terrified of the premise of a break-in or some other uninvited human interaction at midnight. I let him bark for a few seconds, telling myself it was just someone walking past our glass door in the adjacent alleyway, and he would quiet down once they passed. Needless to say, that's not what happened. 
He kept barking and growling for a few moments too long, and I finally got out of bed. I slept in the basement and walked upstairs to check it out. As I'd suspected, he was standing alert at the glass door. I was comforted for a moment until I walked over, ready to close the curtains and go back to sleep, and saw the door open about two or three inches. I froze. I had let Bosco, the dog, out earlier that night, but I know I closed the door. I have never left this door open. I am a paranoid person with bad anxiety, especially concerning break-ins and the like, so I would never, home alone, forget to close the door. I am 100% certain. But at the time, I didn't let myself think about these facts or even acknowledge that I could not have left the door open because I knew it would send me into a spiral, possibly even an anxiety or panic attack if I didn't explain this away. I closed and locked the door, double checking that it was certainly locked. Using the flashlight on my phone, the lights were all off. I looked around the entire second floor of my three floor house, including closets and other reasonable hiding spots just to put my mind at ease and upon finding nothing, went back downstairs to my room. As I was down there, trying to push away the fear, I could hear Bosco walking around on the floor that doubles as my bedroom's roof. I thought I was overthinking it when it started to sound like human footsteps accompanied by Bosco's footsteps. He walks around for about 10 minutes before I put my earphones in and talk myself down until I can fall asleep. At 2 a.m. the same night, my sister comes home from work. I woke up a few minutes before this to Bosco in the basement, which he never does. There's even a gate to stop him from getting into the basement, whining at my bedroom door. When I got up to let him out, my sister walked in, and we let him out the front door rather than the glass patio door, letting him in the same way. We talked for a while before I went back downstairs and my sister went to the bathroom. I forgot about the door, busy with work, for the next few days, and I forgot to mention it to anyone until tonight. My sister and my mom were at home with me for a movie night while my dad and brothers stay at the cabin. I remembered the door situation when we were picking out horror movies to watch. I was sharing it as a creepy, almost funny story before my sister spoke up, saying that, the same night, an hour or so after they got home, the door was open again, the same door that was locked from the inside, and not open since, earlier that night. My stomach dropped, and I started shaking the second that this was revealed. We first started trying to explain it away. Maybe she had let Boss go out and forgot to close it until we both recalled that we'd used the front door. Then we were trying to justify a reason someone would break in not to steal anything and proceed to stay for two hours before leaving. Ultimately, I realized that I quite possibly locked someone in the house with me, then forced them to hide upstairs while I searched the second level of our house. Then, this hypothetical person would be trapped up there now, knowing that this house, that appears empty with the rest of my family gone and all the lights off, was not empty, and there was a dog who would bark if they showed themselves again, alerting me to their presence. Then, when I was in the basement and my sister was in the bathroom, they ran out the glass door, which is timed perfectly to when they found the door open once more much wider than when I found it, as though they were only in a hurry on the way out. Perhaps they left it open the first time for a quick escape, or to stop the loud sound of it meeting the door frame. Either way, it ties together too perfectly for me to reasonably brush it off. I know it's unlikely, especially with nothing missing, but in this small town, there have been many reports of break-ins with nothing missing, vandalizing, or just breaking and enterings many, many times, so it's not as unlikely as it may be in a bigger city. 
I can't make sense of this, and I'm shaken up thinking of the possibility of someone being in my house while I was asleep, alone, in the basement. There's a part of me that doesn't believe it, but I can't shake the too many coincidences that all tie together to make this as concerning as it is. <laughs>